I will say more. Mike Tyson will always be with us. Even despite the fact that he retired from boxing long ago, has been in a series of scandals and starred in a number of mediocre films. But he's twice. Speed, power and aggression inside the ring will inspire millions of boxing fans around the world for a long time. How you doing, coach? Right on the chin. I'm going home and relaxing because I don't want my head to swell any more than it is. A lot of documentaries were filmed about Mike Tyson. His biography was repeatedly retold and is definitely well known to the fans of the legend. So in this episode, I will focus only on Tyson's training and psychology. Punches are not made, they are born. He was born a puncher. It's just my nature, you know I mean? It, I mean, to reach for you and take your heart or your blood or your spleen or your liver. Mike was born to become a fighter. Even being an athlete by his nature, the future king of the world of boxing Mike Tyson had to work hard on his physics before he was able to crush his opponents. Mike fought in the streets from a young age, but he started training only when he was 16 years old. Even then he weighed about 175 pounds and was constantly gaining muscle mass and adding power without losing speed. Although for Tyson, as for a boxer, gaining weight was not a priority. Just something, it, being a big man really doesn't matter, it has no significance and knock out someone. The main point is the quickness and what you throw the punches and that leverage is what you have in the shoulder snap. And that's and the object of really knocking out an individual is throwing a punch where he can't see. And when there's combination punches. And when you throw punches and you punch. Any boxer will agree that the fighter should have strong legs. They will keep the tired body even in the last rounds. They will allow to keep the distance. Or to the contrary reach the opponent at the speed of light. Every truly powerful strike starts from the legs. So it is no surprise that every day at half past 4 a.m. Mike went for a long run for 5-6 miles. Why do it so early you might ask? But Tyson liked to train and become better while his future rivals still slept. However, after jogging, Mike had his breakfast and went to the bed again. After that, he continued his endless training routine for the whole body. In 10 rounds of functional training, he performed 2,000 squats, 500 reps for triceps, 500 push-ups, 500 shrugs with a weight of 65 pounds, plus 15 or more exercises for the muscles of the neck. Mike paid much attention to this muscle group. A powerful neck is especially important in boxing and in many other martial arts as it reduces the chance of getting a knockout after taking a heavy blow to the head. A good way to strengthen the neck are the so-called bridge curls, which are widely used in wrestling, boxing and many other martial arts. Mike often used those, and thus was able to develop the muscles from the base of the skull to traps and delts. As a result, his neck was about 20.5 inches in size. That is a very powerful neck for a man 178 centimeters tall and 176 pounds of weight. Keep, keep the head down when you come up with the H. Keep your head down. Up. Yeah, I mean, it's not coming up, but it's starting to come up. You can make it perfect. It's good, but it's not perfect. Don't forget about several hours of cardio every day including jogging in the morning and in the afternoon, 10 or more rounds of sparring, shadow boxing, punching a heavy bag, numerous exercises on the abs, training the body to resist the shock, long sets of jumps with the rope, and of course, training of the peekaboo style with a constant change of rhythm and depth of squats, and lots and lots of other exercises. This style of training required a lot of energy and effort. Me and my trainer, Custom Model, we always put a great deal of emphasis on our speed and combinations. He always told me speed kills, speed is what kills, the speed kills. With the weight he had, and with such an exhausting training routine, he had to eat at least three to 4,000 calories a day 
with enough carbs and proteins not to lose weight and to progress to reach the super heavyweight category. In terms of nutrition, Tyson usually started the day with oatmeal. After that, he had few more meals with beefsteak and rice, or with pasta and vegetables, adding juice and fruits. In reality, such training routine for five days a week was much harder than it might look. But to have the unrivaled speed, power and reaction, Mike was ready to do everything that was necessary. Among other achievements, he holds the record for the largest number of the fastest knockouts in the Guinness Book of Records, as well as the youngest world heavyweight champion. Mike finished most of his fights in the first round. Tyson does not throw wild punches. Big left hook. Actual motion machine so far. This isn't going to go too long. There were even knockouts at the eighth second of the bout. I still haven't mentioned that Mike's coaches repeatedly said that the young Tyson did not train with iron. He was naturally a big man, and training with his own weight was enough to develop the muscles of the whole body. For various reasons outside the ring, after years of training, Mike started skipping routines. But sometimes, at the late stages of his career and after his retirement, Tyson trained in the gyms as well as with free weights. However, Mike was getting his victories not only due to physical superiority, often he was smaller than his opponents. I was never really a big heavyweight. When I was in my prime, I never weighed over 217, 219. But for Tyson, the speed and pressure were the crucial factors of the victory during the battle, and the psychological aspect even before the start of the fight. I was beating guys off against pure brute strength and determination. Most guys were yet, um, pretty much intimidated. They lost the fight before they even got hit, most guys. I knew, I knew the um, art of skullduggery. These guys, I knew how to beat these guys psychologically before I even got in the ring with them. I'm scared to death. I'm totally afraid. I'm afraid of everything. I'm afraid of losing. I'm afraid of being humiliated. But I'm totally confident. The closer I get to the ring, the more confident I get. The closer, more confidence I get. The closer, more confidence I get. All during my training, I've been afraid of this man. I thought this man might be capable of beating me. I've dreamed of him beating me, but that was, But I always stayed afraid of him. But the closer I get to the ring, I'm more confident. Once I'm in the ring, I'm a god. No one could beat me. However, life has prepared a lot of challenges for Mike. Defeats in the ring, the emptiness after betrayal of the loved ones, and bankruptcy because of dishonest managers, divorce and alcohol. Years later, Tyson was not a man he used to be, but still he admits, no matter how hard his fate would strike him, he would still be able to take the blow. One should judge of Mike Tyson by his young years, when he fought for victory and not just money like in his last fights, where he had to step inside the ring, but that fire in his eyes was gone. He fought, but not for the sake of victory. He's worked up a full sweat. I want to tell you, the electricity in this crowd is awesome. I haven't felt like this since it was about 4 o'clock in the morning one morning. We're in a place called Kinshasa Zaire, when Muhammad Ali came in against George Foreman for the heavyweight championship of the world. No doubt that Mike Tyson at his prime was one of the best athletes in boxing history. But no one can stay on top forever. Even the legends must go when their best days are gone. I keep my eyes on him, I keep my eyes on him, I keep my eyes on him. Then once I see a chink in his armor, boom, and one of his eyes may move. During the fight, I'm supremely confident. I'm moving my head, he's throwing punches. I'm making a miss and I'm countering. I'm hitting him to the body, I'm punching him real hard. 
and I'm punching him, and I'm punching him, I know he's not able to take my punches. One, two, three punches, I'm throwing him butt punches and bunches. He goes down, he's out. I'm victorious. Mike Tyson, greatest fighter that ever lived. Thanks for watching this video until the end. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel and watch the new episodes about the legends of the past.